keep you healthy. So that's what I wanted to say. We really admire your determination. Oh my God, thank you. Don't make me cry, Ms. Chantal. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, I, I do this because I really care for my people and I couldn't be me if I didn't care. And, you know, that's just the way it is. Because at the end of the day, people ask me all the time, were you born in Haiti? Why do you do all of this for Haiti? I tell people I was born here, but my spirit must have been in Haiti before I was even born or something. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ms. Chantal, for those encouraging words. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to unmute themselves and say anything right now before we start, we're starting in about two minutes, two minutes, but I hate dead space, so. Hi, everybody. So I'm glad to be here with you. Yeah. And Haiti needs all his kids right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's sick in hospital, so he's in sanatorium. And he needs all of us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yes absolutely Haiti is sick and we have to restore Haiti yes I love it very good analogy okay okay hello everyone I'm Sabrina I'm in my Sabrina Bones I'm in Miami can you guys see me yeah hello hi hello. everyone I'm delightful to be on this group I'm I'm into media I'm not really into politics but I am concerned about everything about Haiti and to get involved for the women, the children, and um, help as much as I can and learn also. Learning is the best process and this is where I'm here. Nice. To learn from all of you, to educate myself and to understand even more what's happening and work together as a team. Yes, absolutely sister. We love you and we honor you and appreciate you. And actually it's that time for us to go live. So um, yes. I'm about to put it on Facebook and Instagram. Um, give me one second. I'm getting another call in. All right, guys. Oh, we have the Reverend um, Rosette here. All right, so here we go. Um, somebody in the background is very loud. So um, we're going to launch and we're going live on social media. No, I think, okay, I got it. So we already have about 15 people on. This is really great. You guys can still send a message, please, ladies and gentlemen, to those community leaders and people that should be on with us. I'm doing the whole Facebook live thing to attract more of our leaders. Um, so give me one second. If anybody has a problem with being on live for social media, I have over 5,000 followers on social media. Um, so we need to utilize that space um, to get more attention for Haiti and more help. So that's why we go live there. So real quick, um, help for Haiti. I'm gonna just keep it short, help for Haiti and updates and updates. We are planning events and getting more help for our um, immigrants. So join us now. Okay, I just put that on Facebook. You guys can share. We'll be going live. Said half for half for Haiti. Uh huh. So that's just something quickly that I just prepared. <laughs> for Haiti. So we're going to be talking about the events. We're going to be talking about- Let me see if um, I can find it. On Facebook, I'm Anaya A. Period. On Facebook, for anybody that wants to join me on Facebook, okay. I just posted it. Um, if you all want to double check your platforms um, to make sure that it's there. And then again, now that it's time, we're going to launch. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm still getting calls and messages. So I will be able to turn on my camera in just a moment. So Facebook says we're live streaming. So if you go to my Facebook page directly, you'll see Anaya A period. Um, that's the name of 
my Facebook page, and then you'll see yourselves, a couple of you right there live. Now you could take that and share it with all of your contacts so that we can optimize this exposure. And we're gonna give everybody 10 to 30 seconds to introduce yourself. And at this time, we're gonna have um, attorney Stephanie Delia go first, so due to the fact that she can't be on um, very long this afternoon. And she is an immigration attorney that we have on the team and that's so exciting. So welcome, uh, attorney. Welcome. Um, you're on mute, attorney. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you would think I have this by now, right? Right, right. <laughs> you're over a year of Zoom and still. <laughs> How are you? Um, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me. I am multitasking, so I'll keep it um, brief. Do you want me to do an intro or just go right into what we're doing? You know what, both of them would be great attorney because I get calls every day and real quick before I even go, I believe there might be even somebody on here now who calls me this morning like, Anaya, I need an immigration attorney. I need help. I get <laughs> Attorney, I get calls every day about this. So. Tell us who you are, your information, and what we're doing together and things like that, please. Yeah, so I am Stephanie Delia. I am an immigration attorney. I am um, I'm wearing a few hats right now. I'm the chair of the Immigration Committee in Halani, um, or HALA NY, the Haitian American Lawyers Association. Uh, please, please, please share the website if you want to volunteer. We have attorneys to help us. I am also the um, attorney in charge with the Legal Defense Project with Haitians, um, the Haitian Studies Institute in Brooklyn College, um, which is super important because uh, we have resources there to assist with translations, interpretations, um, which are necessary for these applications. Thirdly, and simultaneously, um, hope is amazing, but I am providing services twice a week, once in Brooklyn, once in Queens, where I'm seeing, um, I'm basically doing what I'm calling a very, a quick consult with um, the newly arrived patients. And part of the issue right now is that they're not getting access to information. And so I look at the forms, I speak to them directly, I explain the state of their circumstances, and then I do a very brief intake, um, but it's also a deep dive intake. So I frame the questions because I'm fluent in Haitian Creole. So I frame the questions in ways they understand to ensure that there's no actual underlying asylum claim that we're not discovering because of the um, communication barrier. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. What we need the most are volunteer attorneys. Um, it sounds weird to ask a volunteer for anything related to removal, but <laughs> right now what we're trying to do is, because there's so many people, there's such a short amount of, um, or there's a lack of availability of resources. We're trying to see if we could provide pro se services that does not require the attorney sign up to represent them. And it sounds like there's nothing you could do, but I assure you information is so powerful for these folks because it protects them from being taken advantage of. So I could do the training. Um, I can get resources to help us do the trainings, but if people have a availability in their attorneys um, and they could do follow-up calls with these clients, I need help to really do deep dive intakes, take a couple of hours, to ask all the necessary questions to ensure that this person doesn't have an underlying asylum claim. If they have it, we want to tell them that it's available to them. They got a year. These are the procedures. This is the form. These are what you're going to need. This is what you should start preparing. And we want to be there to support them in um, applying for those. I know that was a mouthful, but time is of the essence. So I got it all out. <laughs> yes, you did. And real quick, um, attorney, because we just had new members join. Matter of fact, my brother, Master B, is out of South Florida. They're having an event with attorneys this weekend. Please let us know, since we have you on as probably one of the most important people on here. No disrespect, everybody. But she is an immigration <laughs> attorney. <laughs> and this is exactly what we've been needing for all this time. So attorney Stephanie, please let us know in detail, like if there are attorneys watching now, like I said, we're live, we're going to be putting this on YouTube after. Um, we're also live on social media. If any attorney is watching and their heart strings are pulled, or they have access or somebody has access to an attorney, and you can actually give they can give services pro bono or, or per se or whatever that legal terminology is. Please tell them oh, how. Okay, perfect. You know, I'm proud of my legal terminology. <laughs> Hi, Evie, I see all of you. Tell us how that works and what we can do to ensure that we can work with you and the people that are seeking asylum and help can get the help they need. 
Yes, so uh, there's, I guess, three major ways. The first and the easiest is if you go to Hala NY um, New York uh, at Gmail, I think it is, but it's based, or you could Google Halani, H-A-L-A-N-Y. It's the Haitian American Lawyers Association um, in New York. If you get on their site, you'll be able to um, just email them directly, or there might still be that link available to volunteer. That's the easiest and the fastest. Um, once you do that, please state if you speak fluent Creole. And what will happen is probably within this week, um, somebody, Daisy, is probably going to reach out to anyone who's interested in volunteering. We're ready to start the training. And what that means is that um, I'll, I have some forms, I have the intakes, I have the questions ready to go. So you don't need experience in immigration law. But what we do need is to start talking to these folks before they go in front of a judge so that if they actually have a claim, we discover it, we inform them, we explain to them why they're eligible, um, how they meet the eligibility criteria, and we we explain to them what to say when they are um, at the proceedings so that they can get that part of the information out. And in essence, what happens is when you go to court, um, there's often a communication barrier. And so helping a person understand that these are the requirements for um, asylum, for instance, and because you experienced this event and because this thing happened to you, um, it makes you potentially eligible is kind of a big deal. So that's the first thing and that's what you would be helping with. Um, you'd basically be talking to people on the phone and helping them understand that and um, helping them remember the dates, helping them recall the incidents, um, explaining to them what type of supporting evidence they're gonna need so they could start working on that. And again, I could do the training. Um, so that's it. The best place is Halani. If not, um, you could email me directly at the Haitian Legal Network at gmail.com. Um, one word, and it's spelled the way it sounds Haitian Legal Network um, at Gmail. Perfect. Attorney Stephanie, um, that's your contact information. And again, she is an attorney on the cases for those that are seeking asylum and much more in our communities. She has all the verbiage down because this is her specialty. So please, everybody, take down her information. Um, if you can, just repeat that information because I'm gonna do, I'm doing a short clip right now so that I can post this afterwards for those that are seeking this type of assistance because there's a lot of people that need this work um, done for them. Oh, and also, I'm pretty sure even if people are not attorneys, attorney, oh my God, that's so crazy. I'm pretty sure if people are not attorneys, they can also volunteer with you all. Absolutely. Perfect. Tell us about that and again your contact information. So um, Haitian Legal Network, all of the words in that are spelled as it sounds. So Haitian, H-A-I-T-I-A-N, Legal, L-E-G-A-L, um, Network, N-E-T-W-O-R-K, at gmail.com. Uh, so that's how to reach me directly. But rather than reach out to me, it's much better to go to Halani, H-A-L-A-N-Y, which is the Haitian American Lawyers Association, I'm sorry, Haitian American Lawyers Association of New York. That is their website. And that is where we're doing the recruitment from. So if you go there, there's probably still the link. If not, you could shoot them an email. Um, and it's where we're recruiting our Haitian attorneys and volunteers. So that's number one. But as far as non-lawyers, um, so this is two part. If you're a lawyer, there is a good chance that you do not have that much time, <laughs> no matter what your um, field of practice are. And so what we're trying to do is, because we know that um, time is always of the essence for you, we want to limit your communication hours with the client. So ideally, you do the first two hours, but I'm, re what I'm referring to as the deep dive intake. And I'll prep you and explain to you what kind of questions, how to phrase the questions, how to fo follow up on each of the questions to kind of ensure that the person really understands what you're looking for. Um, because so far, no one has been able to provide the information I needed during my first initial um, questioning. And the more I explain, the more they explain to me instances that make them clearly and obviously um, eligible for asylum. But it often requires a lot of digging because um, a lot of our people have endured so much trauma that trauma to them is normalized. And so if you're saying, have you ever been attacked? They don't consider being stoned you know, having rocks thrown at him, them because they're trying to um, vote an attack. They just refer to it as that's just what happens. Um, oftentimes they don't consider 
you know, um, a lot of things that we clearly see as attack, they don't realize that that's what it is. And that is why we need um, Haitian attorneys who speak Creole too. And why the reason I refer to it as a deep dive is because we don't just say, have you ever been attacked? We say, has anyone ever hit you? Has anyone ever put their hands on you? Have you ever actually voted? Okay, what happened then? Were you able to vote and exercise that right? Um, and what you'll find is no, no one's ever attacked me. No, no one's ever stopped me. But yes, the day I went to vote, you know, there were gunshots and then somebody chased me and they threw rocks at me and chased me with a machete. And you're kind of like, okay, so that qualifies as attacks. Um, and those are actual really examples I'm using. And so that's the purpose of the attorneys. The non-attorneys can help with helping them gather the supporting documents. So once that attorney makes that initial assessment and I'll review it and they say, okay, great, this person meets the eligibility. The next step is gathering documents, supporting documents, creating statements, getting those translated. And that's its own nightmare. Um, law students would be ideal, but those people could say, okay, I need a copy of the birth certificate. And obviously these people have traveled for months to get here. So they don't all have access to their documents. So part of it may be saying, this is how you could get copies of these things. This is what you need at a minimum. This is the backup. Um, and that part, so those kind of gathering supporting documents and explaining things, helping them go over their story again, reviewing it, um, telling them what's missing, that could be non-attorneys. Thank you so much, Attorney Stephanie, and we are so appreciative. This clip is going on to my social media platforms, um, and I know you have to run because you're so busy, but if you can tune in and stay listening, that'll be really great. Um, wow, so much information, and I'm so happy the attorney is with us today. With that being said, yes, we're doing it, guys. So there's about 16 to 20 of you on here live right now. What we're going to do is we're going to go around the room. Um, I'm getting calls. So if you see oh, yeah. that my video is not on, it's because as I sit here, I'm getting calls. People are trying to get on and things of that nature. So please bear with me um, because at the end of the day, I get a million calls a day and I want the people that are calling to be a part of this. So I see all of you. Um, thank you for the thumbs up, Master B. At this time, I want to say again, please tell your contacts right now. Send a Zoom link out to your social media. This information that we're providing for you is literally like you can't get it anywhere else because we have a community of leaders. We have the Public Advocates Office represented right now. We have leaders from all sorts of organizations from New York to New Jersey to Florida to Canada. You say Canada, I say Canada. Um, we have people that are a part of my network from the National Action Network that's on here under Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton. So I don't necessarily have to tell you who the people are, but what I want you to do is please share with your contacts right now because of the caliber of information we're receiving and you cannot get this information a lot of times from ordinary people on the street. So we wanna be able to share, share, share and I'm so appreciative of each of you. So at this time, I'm just gonna go around the room as I make this phone call to follow up with this person that just called me. And the first person I see is Sabrina. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around the room. Please don't um, feel disrespected if your name is not called right now, you will get a chance to speak and share who you are. So um, I'm gonna hit um, Sabrina first. Miss Sabrina, please um, introduce, reintroduce yourself, sister. Please unmute. And um, I know you spoke moments ago. And then right after Sabrina, we'll have Master B, AKA DB, because I see him next. So please unmute yourself. And I'm gonna mute myself to return a phone call right now. Hi, everyone. I'm not used to, <laughs> to chatting, as you know, um, and yeah, so. I work in media. My name is Sabrina Bozeman. I live in Miami. Never been in politics before. I mean, I've done some fundraiser for Haiti, for Haiti before, but never really been involved in politics. And like I said, I'm here to learn and educate myself with all these wonderful women and just learn and get better at it. That's what I can say. So I'm glad to be here and meet all of you and I'm ready to learn. And um, like I said, I'm here for the country. I want to help be a voice. As I want to help as much as I can. And number one, I want to learn. That's what I'm here for. Hi, Master B. <laughs> Thank you, Give Sabrina. Me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you. And, and we love the fact that you're helping the country. And I know um, politics is not your forte, but we're about to figure things I'm out. I'm going to get there. I'm getting there, though. I'm That's getting funny. there. We got you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm getting there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you here. Well. Yes, ma'am. We love you and we appreciate all of you. We honor all the men and women that are on with us. Um, okay, perfect. Now we have Master B. Master B, did you want to unmute yourself, big brother? 
Uh, you gonna say, how are you, Sabrina? Nice to see you. Nice to see everybody up there. Anaya, little sister, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. Tell the people what? who you are and what we've been working on, please. You have a lot of new people here today, a lot. Oh, wonderful, I, I can see that. Um, right now, you can hear some noise in the background. I'm, I'm in Delhi Beach. That's where we will have a big event over the weekend for all the people from El Paso under the bridge. That's as, this is where I'm at now, a big event. This is Master B. Uh, the name is uh, uh, GB, say Georges Rousseau Belfont. So the, um, the CEO of Caribbean Community uh, Voices and the, um, the vice president of uh, Community Concern for children and family. So basically, as you know, uh, we travel, we travel together in, uh, in Texas and then um, back to New York and then, and then uh, past yesterday, I back to Florida. As you know, we have a big event coming up. That's why was very interesting about the lawyer, the one of the- uh, well, But they was... don't, Master B, they don't know anything about the event. I know, but you need to tell them because they don't yeah. know. I, I'm gonna need some lawyers here because she was telling I want the links because I get in the uh, in the lake late. The thing she was saying we need more Haitian lawyers down here because we're gonna need them this weekend. So what we doing exactly this weekend? I have I have a few a few members here with me. We have uh, Zimka, which is you already know. Uh, she's here with me. Cecil Z and then Farah Z. We have we have a group here with me. So we have the event this weekend. Where have you heard the people from Brazil, people from Argentina, people from Chile, the whole group from, from Mexico were under the bridge in El Paso about a month ago. So there was in the whole world were watching. As you know, 80% of those people they have released, they're all down here. And then after our statistics, we find out they all, most of them are in, in uh, West Palm Beach. So therefore, the association, the senders, some of the association in Houston and El Paso decided to do some event for them. But this event is gonna be over the weekend on November the 20th, this Saturday. The event where they're gonna have some donations for them. I think uh, two, they already, uh, they already have two trailer 53, Feed, uh, food there. They're already on the woods coming to to uh, to West Palm Beach uh, for donation for those people, and then also we will have some lawyers. But most my interesting now is looking for some Haitian lawyers too. Those people can understand because that day is going to be a full days. We already have thousands of people already calling. So basically, donation for those people. What donations are? Those are the donation while they were there. Some new stuff. Walmart, a lot of companies sent for them. They didn't have the chance to travel with that, those donations. So they couldn't travel because they, they asked them to pay every bank on school. So now they're bringing back all the donations to those people before Christmas. And then also uh, all the, uh, the people are giving them the asylum paper so the people can, can understand. What I see in, when they call my office, a lot of them, they, they put them to 2023. Two, three years from now to go and call the judge. So basically, those need help. What about work? These are the people gonna hang around with no work, they don't have no paper and no money. Those are why I'm very interested. Well, the young lady was speaking earlier. So in that thing, I oh, need I those. That. Yeah, we need those more lawyers as 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 much on that Saturday morning. We need that because we need to involve them more because they have questions and we're going to have thousands of them going to be there that day. So it's going to be a huge event inside Delhi Beach. Okay. So I like everybody to know, I'm going to send you the flyer, the flyers and stuff like that. So basically it's going to be huge. We're going to need lawyers. We're going to need nurses. We're going to need every hand we can. And whomever is in the phone, if you have someone down here in Palm Beach and anybody in, in Fort Lauderdale, everybody in Port St. Lucie, Miami, we're going to have this weekend because it's going to be huge. It's going to be a huge event. So please spread, spread the word for us. And then we also have Cecile. Cecile, if you put a few words because she's here now. Say hi, Cecile. Hi. Hi, everyone. We're here this weekend. All hands on deck. If you can, we're going to have the table for the lawyers. If you know nurses, 
please pass the word and we'll see you Saturday. So we're here on the ground getting things ready for Saturday. So Napton tout moon. So come and help. You hear that? Thank so you, she thank you, thank you. Master B, tell the location, please, um, for those that can be in West Palm Beach and Delray Beach. Um, as we move on to our next um person, tell a uh, contact information as well for the people because it's very important that people can support location and the location, uh, yeah. The location is uh 1960 Swinton Avenue in uh, Delray Beach, Florida. Okay. Zip code 33444. 1960 Swinton, uh, Swinton Ave and uh, Delray Beach 33444. As the number they can contact directly, 561 305 2282. 561 305 2282. And also, uh, your uh, number. Six in case 610 620 7604. Okay, okay, that's the number here. Okay, Thank 610. You. Thank you, big brother. Yeah. Thank you. Please. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cecile. Thank you guys so much. We love you. As you guys can see, we have people from all over the globe working on helping our people. This is a group and a family event, and we want to make sure every hand is on deck, as they said. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Master B. We are here live. Now we're going to take, um, thank you, big brother. And if you have anything else, send me a message real quick as we try to get as many people on as possible because we have almost 30 people on already. This is amazing. We still can take 300 people, maybe 1,000 people this afternoon for Haiti. This is super encouraging because we have not been on for two weeks, maybe three weeks because of, of traveling. But guess what? God is faithful. At this time, let me take Chantal Auguste. Chantal, I just met and she's a leader. So I'm just going around the room. We're live on Instagram. We're live on Facebook. We have new friends that we're meeting every day. Um, I'm still making phone calls um, and answering calls. That's why you don't see me yet, but you will see my face in just a few. Go ahead, Ms. Chantal, as we go around the room. Hello, everyone. I am so thrilled to be here, honored to be with people that have a love for Haiti. I myself are crazy and want to do things. I'm like Sabrina Bozeman. I'm not much into politics. I'm here to learn as far as politics. But I am the founder of the Movement for Liberation of Haiti. We recently been formed. And our focus is to find how we can help Haiti to get the safety to whatever we can. We go out every Saturday at four o'clock and march peacefully to show uh, awareness of what's going on in Haiti. All over the world, if we can have, we in only few uh, states and country, but we want it everywhere that we stand at the same time everywhere and show to people, our friends, that do not know what's going on in Haiti. This is what we're going on, that's going on for us, and how we can solve the problem of the gains of the humanitarian crisis. We're sending letters to our governments and, uh, and petition. And we want to find more and more what we can do to solve that insecurity, the, the fear that's going on to Haiti. So we could go, all of us, I know we are desire is to go there and help the people. So our migrants that are being so humiliated can go back home and find work. They are tired. They don't want to go anywhere else. They want to go home. And this is why I'm here to learn, to understand things and to be part of all those organic group ourselves as a unity. All of us, we have great things to offer is to gather all of us and learn about what I and I are doing here, learn as a Haitian diaspora of, um, United of Haiti doing, why Seha is doing, all of us. What are we about and what we can do? But thank you, I'm so happy to be among you. Thank you, beautiful Chantal, we appreciate you. Um, at this time, we're gonna call on, I feel like Evie Benamé can speak, my sister Evie Benamé. She is actually representing one of the biggest offices that we have. Evie, if you can unmute yourself, I know you're super busy. If not, we're gonna take Teresa Price. Oh, Evie can unmute herself. Evie, please share who you are, sister. And matter of fact, Evie, tell your counterparts, our brothers in the movement, that they should be here too. You know who I'm talking about, Pastor Sam and Jackson are not here yet, but those yes. are 
Yes, they need to be here. And I know you have that voice. You can tell them and they will come. So please, Evie, tell us who you are, beautiful. We love you. Hi, my name is Evie Bianame. Um, I'm here in, on a personal capacity, but I am also the community organizer working in public advocate Jamani D. Williams's office. Um, I am hoping that everyone that's online right now is also on our WhatsApp, our group, our Haitian March group, getting ready for our December 10th uh, March on Washington. You know, I hope everybody is on there. So, you know, thumbs up if you are, that'll be great. Um, that's really what I'm working on with our team right now, with Anaya, all of the, the our veteran um, protesters of civil disobedience, the, the Brooklyn Bridge Six. Um, as you know, Anaya was a part of that as well. I strongly recommend that everyone continue to work towards marching on Washington because one of the things that I realized is that the more we stay in the news, the more we stay relevant, yes. the more the more we are actually being engaged by political officials all over. This week has been very busy for a lot of political officials um, because you know we had a, a street naming on Sunday where, um, you know, and it's been a long time coming. Um, Jean-Baptiste um, Dussab Street was named, we was co-named um, on Sunday at, for Clarendon Road and Flatbush. That happened. And then tomorrow we, we are scheduled to have so, a list of events, including the naming of our, um, the Newkirk Avenue train station, Little Haiti. The signs are already up. I took some photos and you know I'm about to post them in the WhatsApp. So get ready to come out tomorrow if you are in Brooklyn to celebrate the new Newkirk Avenue train station will, will be the Little Haiti stop. So what's happening now is that we are we are actually starting to get red flags. You know, we are starting to get pointers for where we are as a community. That also talks about, that speaks to political power, guys. And we need to build. We are 1 million strong in the United States. Could you imagine only half of us marching on Washington? We, we are not to be ignored anymore. I don't want to hear any political officials saying that they don't know. They don't know about us. They don't know about our language. They don't know who we are. We need to be seen. We need to be all over all over the United States. So I would definitely say that um, it I'm seeing some progress, but again, um, we're over 200,000 in New York City. I think we need to have, we need to get loud. Haitians know how to be loud. I, I went out today, I was so loud. As a Haitian woman, we need to be loud. So start raising your voices for your people because we have to, we have, to have a presence wherever we are. And most of us are very educated, very eloquent, very, you know, we know what it is that we need to do in order to make our presence felt. So I would say, let's, let's start that now and speak to your children, speak to your family when they walk into the schools, make their presence felt. Even, because you're putting somebody in a job. You walk into a hospital, Monday putting somebody in a job. You know what I'm saying? So start to, start to make your presence felt. I'm, I'm also very upset that I don't see Haitian Creole on the ballot box in Brooklyn as of yet. So that we're working on. So let's just make our presence felt and get ready to march on December 10th, Friday, December 10th. We're going to Washington. We want Biden to know, Nubuke. We want Biden to know that he should not ignore our elected officials we put them there and he has to respect them okay so that's what i that's what Thank i have you. to say evie before you um get off um as we introduce others i want you to remind the people about tomorrow's location please you have all the details for tomorrow please tell them who can come out for tomorrow please remind them 
Right. So tomorrow it's the New Kirk Avenue Little Haiti subway station. If you could take the number two, the number five train to New Kirk Avenue, you're there. And it's at 11 o'clock. And it's um, we're gonna start on, you know, once you come out of the train on New Kirk, you're right there at the steps of St. Jerome Roman Catholic Church. It's on Nostrand Avenue, which is the Toussaint Louverture Boulevard, okay? Uh, corner of New Kirk, right there. So you can't miss it. You will definitely feel the vibra vibrations. There'll be a celebration. Um, New Kirk Avenue, it's it's actually between East 29th Street and Nostrand Avenue. That's where the church is. There'll be live entertainment. There'll be resource vendors. There'll be food. You have to get pate, vini bon, ne, on connaît qui j'en ouye. On connaît. Si nous besoin de morceaux pate, nous besoin de un petit café, vini bon. And chocolate, Haitian chocolate will be there as well, according to Jackson. Yes. So come on out, thanks to and give all props to Rodney's Bichot, our assembly woman, and also Kevin Parker. So if you're there, stop by, ask for a photo op, shake their hand, tell them thank you for the work that they're doing in the community. So please put it on your calendar, come out tomorrow, 11 a.m. Thank you so much for that informative and amazing um, update. We love you, we love you, we love you. Um, again, she's um, acting on a personal um, status this afternoon, but Evie Bennett May has been leading the way with a whole lot in our community because she really cares. We're live on Facebook and Instagram. You guys can tell your friends right now. We thank you, Evie. And yes, Assemblywoman Rodney Bichot, as well as Senator Kevin Parker are leading the way for tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. You can't miss it. Get off at Newkirk train station, two or the five. I want my people from Long, um, Long Island I see Miss Nikita here. I see Miss Chantal here. I see all of you here, and you're from different areas. So even if you can't show up physically, please tell your friends that they can come and support tomorrow because this is a huge endeavor. I'll get more into detail about that later. We want everybody to introduce them themselves, and I'll share also why this is so important. At this time, um, I see Teresa Price, whom I just met. Um, I don't know if she could unmute herself. I just met Miss Teresa Price in D D E Delaware. And we hung out in Philadelphia over the weekend supporting a community of somebody uh, who was murdered by the police. If you guys don't know, now you know I am a civil rights leader um, and I have been fighting for justice, not just for Haiti. It started off with um, the police brutality. But I'm gonna let Ms. Teresa Price share who she is. Because guess what? After we met, we like fell in love like sisters. And she texted me and said, Anaya, I wanna help you no matter what. So now she's being put to work in the Haitian community. So Teresa. <laughs> Hi, how's everybody? My name is Teresa Price and I am from Delaware, um, ACLU ambassador. And, and um, even though there may be times that I'll get to you and be able to participate with you, but just know that I'm in fellowship with you. And if there's anything that I can do, I am available. Absolutely. And Thank please you. tell us a little bit more about the ACLU because you know I'm still learning. But I love this organization that you're affiliated with my sister. The, ACL, the ACLU is an organization that we have to give the, what the police over, officers. They cannot, they cannot give. go over the limit, the number. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, Ms. Teresa. Okay. Um, it's an organization. ACLU is an organization that um, comes together to have um, the police, you know how when you go to court, the police has representation and the um, victims don't have it. Well, we're trying to impose a bill, um, SB 149, that will include, um, uh, um, what is it called? Um, oh God, what is it? Um, that, the, that the victims have, um, legal representation as well as the police officers. And not only that, we're trying to get them who um, shoot and kill our people to be exposed. We wanna know who these police officers are. And we're working on a, a several um, other or organizations as well as one where um, the tenant 
goes to court and he doesn't have any type of representation again and the police officers do. So we're working on many, many um, organizations. Y'all pray for us. We're going to pray for you. And again, if there's anything we can do, trust me, I'm there. Well, you know, when you said that, sister, trust me, you will be um, getting calls from Anaya A because this is an issue. And I just want to share um, because she is patient. I mean, she is Black American. But what we want is more Black American, just American people in general, to see the plight of the Haitian people. And while we're here, Teresa is also um, an, um, a social worker. So she has um, many hats that she wears. And the reason why I wanted to make sure you were here today was when you said, you know, whatever you could do to help, honey, it's so big because the people that are getting beaten at the borders, the people that are seeking asylum, you know, a lot of times people don't want me to talk the truth. And they're like, Anaya, but the Afghanis are not white. They're colored too. But guess what? We're right. more colored than the Afghanis. You feel me? And so yes. the reason why we push so hard is because we want the same justice. We want due process. We want asylum because Haiti is in a nightmare that America essentially yeah. put us in. Yeah. And yes. we know the truth for me, sir. So that's yeah, and I have... we... Go ahead. Go ahead I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, I have many friends that are Haitians. Um... I used to gather clothes and shoes and stuff for one of my girlfriends whose father used to have an all girls school in Haitian. So I'm very familiar with it. I don't speak it and um, I, you know, I do whatever I can, but I'm telling you now, I'm with you 110%. I'm with you. Thank you, sister. And I didn't even know that about her. And as you can see, she's been fighting for us and God brought us together for a purpose and a reason. So I appreciate you, sister. Thank you, Teresa. Sure, thank you. Of course. So that's this is what we're doing, guys. We're building the bridge between Black America, Haiti, Africa, all of the communities are coming together. And I won't stop until every Black person stands up against this foolishness that we are dealing with. Praise the Lord. Um, Y'all know I'm not playing. Um, All right. Now we have, I see Zoom user. Zoom user. I don't know who that is, but it's a sister, I believe, driving a car. Um, And you're already unmuted. That's why I'm calling you. Are you able to speak? You're driving a car right now in all black with a black mask? Oh, it is Dr. Magdalene. I, can you hear me, Mr. Maya? Yes, I'm Dr. Oh, it says Zoom user. Oh, because I'm on my phone. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I can speak because I'm driving. Okay. Uh, well, you know, uh, Felicia, thank you for your support. And thanks to everyone who's on this call in this meeting. Uh, just as much as everyone is here to support the cause, as a New York City principal, um, I'm working with other educators to try to mobilize, to empower Haitian parents, to provide opportunities for students who are of Haitian ancestry. We're trying right now to raise money to get scholarships to be able in June to distribute scholarships to uh, students who are graduating from the high school system. So where, so although we may not be physically present at protests, et cetera, but we're using our voice and our support network to support the people in our community because we are all one. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Magaly. That was so funny. I love my team and my community. And one thing I want to share before we end this afternoon is this. So speaking of getting scholarships for the young people, I want you all to know I am a contributor on the Dr. Oz show. I've been with Dr. Oz for about five years. Um, a lot of people have seen me on that platform, but I change my look so much. Sometimes you don't even recognize me. And I don't say that I'm Haitian because a lot of times, um, you know, it's, it, we can't be personal anyway with Dr. Oz. But this last time I was on set with Dr. Oz, one of the things that happened is Dr. Oz really wanted to know more about me and about my work. This has never happened. I thank God for the pandemic. Some people hate Corona. I love Kawona because Kawona has given me a, an additional platform to stand up and to really do what I'm passionate about. So real quick, I want to share this, that Dr. Oz also helps young people get scholarships for college and things of that nature. And so I took the chance, guys, to ask Dr. Oz's producers um, that, you know, my team, whether or not Dr. Oz helps with underprivileged communities and helps give out scholarships for medical 
doctor, et cetera. And yes, he does. So thank you to Dr. Magali for sharing that because you made me remember that that's another platform we're utilizing to help our immigrant students, but not just the immigrants, but the black students as well, because they're underprivileged a lot of times in their communities and being a medical doctor is not easy and it's not cheap. So if anybody wants to join forces in that, because I am an educator and I want us to educate more of our young people to have something for the future, Reach out 347-617-6873. Dr. Oz and I will be um, working on some things in a very new near future. And let me just share this last tidbit. It was the first time on set that I represented Haiti and I had my Haitian earrings on. That was like so emotional for me because I didn't even, I didn't know that the, um, the wardrobe team would approve, but I took this chance all around, not only to talk about Haiti, not only to do what I love, to wear Haitian flag earrings on the set of a national platform that were um, given to me by Evie Bename, actually, and they approved for me to wear these earrings. So we will have a watch party for that day when that um, segment comes out. So thank you so much, Dr. Magali. Um, I think your hand was up to say something else. Um, yes. So uh, and as a matter of fact, in terms of doing this work from the educational platform, trying to unite other educators, I want to put it out there uh, that we're hosting a free event. It's free, my favorite F word, free and food. We're hosting an event in Elmont on Friday. It's 333 Elmont Road in Elmont, New York. So come one, come all. Thank you, thank you. Please drop that information, the address, the phone number, and I'll make sure everybody comes out to Elmont to support that cause for sure. We appreciate you on that tip. And yes, Evie, big ups to you. No, I, I just wanted to say, I will start taking some orders for those earrings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. All right. Um, I see Nikita Sejour on, Nikita Sejour. Please unmute yourself if you can, my beautiful one. Um, I am so happy to be reunited with this beautiful sister, Nikita. She's been on um, as well for a while. Nikita, are you able to introduce yourself, beautiful? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nikita, administrator for Haitian Diaspora United for Haiti. Um, and thank you, Ms. Danaya, for inviting me today. It was so a lot of information, a lot of information. Um, and um, I invite you guys to take time and look at the site. It's um, hduh.org, Asian Diaspora United for Haiti. And, um, and I'm looking forward to learning and sharing um, whatever, all those um, things we can do together with you guys. Uh, that, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ms. Nikita. Of course, um, Yolette, I believe Yolette cannot speak because she's um, in a location. Um, Yolette is actually a partner um, as well with um, Habnet. Um, Evie, if you can, um, Jackson was just on. I don't know what happened to Jackson, but Reverend Sam and Jackson have not made their grand appearance to speak yet, and I need them on to share because there's something happening tomorrow that that's their platform, which you briefly shared about, and also tell them um, the people about the 10th of December as we try to get everybody to introduce themselves. We'll be on here for just a few more minutes and then we'll go into the crux of the message. Um, I love to share everybody's platform because guess what? When we share, we're building more of an army. I'm all about fighting for justice and I believe fighting calls for people to be in unison and working together because we can't do it by ourselves. So if it looks like it takes a forever for us to introduce ourselves, I apologize to all those people, but I want you to know who you're dealing with. That's the main point. I want you to know all the great leaders that we have working together, you know? So at this time, um, I want to call on Ketli Excellence. Ketli Excellence, um, C-E-H-A-H. -H. Please reintroduce yourself, my love. Um, whom I met through Master B, and ironically enough, she's in another powerful group, Chantal Agus and Nikita and all these great humans. Hi, everybody. My Hi. name is Ketli Excellent, and I'm the founder and president of Centre Haitien d'Action Humanitaire, which is an organization is working on healthcare, education, and agriculture in Haiti. And we are in USA, Canada in Haiti. Uh, I'm an activist. I've been working all my life <laughs> and for to change things in Haiti. 
I'm very involved in political uh, stuff in Haiti. So I'm a mother, a Christian, and someone who loves Haiti who was to uh, who's working for a better Haiti. So I'm glad to be with you guys, and together we can change Haiti. Together we can uh, take over. Together we can make our uh, ancestors proud of us. So glad to be here. Thank you, Petly. Thank you. Thank you. We also have um, Dre. Dre, who has been on. Dre, Dre, please unmute yourself. And after we have Dre, Dre on, we will introduce Jackson, who is my cellmate. Dre, Dre, can you unmute yourself? He's been on from the very beginning. And if he's not able to unmute and speak, we'll go ahead and take Mr. Jackson. Sorry, I live in New York City, guys. It's very loud here. All right, let's go ahead and take Mr. Jackson Rockenstar, the head of Habnet, the head of Little BK, New York City, IET, everywhere with uh, our Haitian people, and my cellmate, my best friend. Go ahead, Jackson. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to all of you. So, yes, I'm Jackson Rockenstar. I'm the president of Habnet. Uh, whose mission is to support and promote entrepreneurship. And I'm also the chair of Little Haiti BK, whose mission is to um, preserve, harness, and showcase uh, all the social cultural institutions in that area we call Little Haiti BK. Um, tomorrow is, is, is going to be a very good day. Uh, those of you who are of Haitian ancestry are probably aware of the fact that uh, November 18th is Bataille de Bétier. It's, it's the Battle of Betier Day that we always celebrate because that was the, the turn of the war against Napoleon Bonaparte. And uh, that really led us into, uh, to be triumphant against the French. Um, so we chose that day to unveil Newkirk Avenue as Newkirk Avenue Little Haiti train station tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. at St. Jerome Church. Uh, which is located at uh, Mostan Avenue, corner of Newkirk Avenue. So you are all invited. Uh, we'll have Haitian hot chocolate. Uh, again, those of you who are Haitian ancestry know how good that is. It's real thick and good. Uh, we'll have, um, you know, patties, beef patties, fish patties, um, herring patties, you name it. Uh, and then we have uh, a nice celebration by uh, Troop Macandal um, and also Troop Etoile. They'll be performing. So it's really, uh, it's really a, a press conference by the MTA followed by these, uh, these, um, these really nice performances. Uh, and of course, networking getting together. Uh, so you are all welcome. It's tomorrow, November 18th, Thursday at 10.30 a.m. on Nelson Avenue in Newkirk. Are there any questions? Jackson, yes. at this time, we would also like you to talk about the December 10th movement. So many people are calling me. So many people want information and they want to go, Jackson. We have people coming from Canada. There are people on here now that want to participate and we have to spread that word. So please share your contact information for sure and also how people can join us on the 10th. Okay, yes. So on the 10th, um, we're going to also use that platform tomorrow to promote the 10th. Um, we are going to Washington DC to really um, fight, protest peacefully uh, for the treatment of Haitian, for the mistreatment of Haitian nationals. Uh, and I'm saying the way we were treated at the border, no other nation has been treated that way. We should not be treated that way either. So we are requesting justice, equity and due process and to end Title 42. Um, we are fighting this in every single venue. Talking about politically, civically, legislatively, and legally. Uh, and of course, what we're planning on doing on uh, Friday, December 10th, is to go and assemble peacefully and put us peacefully, demanding, requesting, asking, uh, for, again, justice, equity, and due process for, for our brothers and sisters who come in. Now, I'm not saying that everyone who comes in should, everyone who comes here should, should be 
you know, open, you should be open, you know, welcome, open arms and, and, and free. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is you have to give us due, due process. You know, you're supposed, you're supposed to interview the people, you know, find out the, the unique situation and make a decision based on the merits. They're not, they're not even giving, they're not even affording those Asian nationals due process. They just send them, you know, they take them and send them, send, you know, put them on a plane and send them back. But that's not the law. Well, according to the Fourth Amendment, no person may be deprived of life, of liberty, of, of property without the process of law. And as long as you're in this country, you are you are afforded those town of the United States of America, you are protected by laws. And they're not following their laws. So they're using something called Title 42, which is being used arbitrarily against people of color, against uh, um, people of national of, of, of Haitian ancestry. Uh, against black people, essentially. And uh, it's very sad to say that things haven't changed since uh, the last time we, we, we had a, a situation where the, the Cubans were coming and the Haitians were coming at, at simultaneously at the same time. And the Cubans were treated one way and the Haitians were treated another way. And again, it was, it was again, very discriminatory and very arbitrary. So that's what we are fighting for. That's what we are going to Washington for. So if you want to participate, you can call us at 877-278-9143. Again, that number is 877-278-9143. Um, and the site where you could register for a bus is info at littlehadybk, info at littlehadybk.org forward slash stand, S-T-A-N-D. Right, and uh, so so you could you could you could um, you could register on our website at littlehadybk.org as well littlehadybk.org forward slash stand and you can register there. Thank you so much, Jackson. We encourage everybody to stand with us. And as everybody knows, I don't just want to go and march and stand up outside. I'm going into the White House one day. I'm going to have all the authorization to walk my Haitian butt inside and sit with Biden at the table. I don't wanna sit down in front of there, in the front of the gates. I'm gonna sit down with Biden and Kamala Harris. They already know Anaya coming, so they scared. They're like, that little Haitian crazy girl is coming. That's right, and I'm not gonna fight y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all, we demand equity, justice, and due process. Don't play with me. Okay, sorry. Let me just calm down. Thank you, Jackson, for that. Um, we appreciate you, Jackson. Y'all know I get riled up about this because it's just not fair what's going on. Um, people are writing from, from Instagram right now. If you're writing for Facebook, give me a few minutes as we take everybody to speak. We have um, a singer and a minister on, and I don't know if she can unmute herself, but we have Princess Liz that's on, and we also have Queen Jenny that's on, and then we have BB. And we have two other people after them. So Queen, um, well, sorry, Princess Liz, if you can unmute yourself, super great and share who you are, my sister. Thank you for joining back with us. Princess Liz, can you unmute? He might be working. Um, okay, Queen Jenny. Queen Jenny, are you able to unmute and share who you are, please? Yes. Hi. Hi, my name is Queen Jenny. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, my name is Queen Jenny. I'm just so excited about this movement and I see great things to come. But we have to stick together more because everything is unfolding and coming in place. Mm. So I need everyone, even everyone, you don't even have to be Haitian. You don't even have to be Black. No, you don't. This is a world crisis. This yes. is a human race crisis. So everyone has to stand up because it needs to stop. Yes. Yes. So um, I'm supposed to be doing a radio show tonight with the uh, radio station. I'm going to post it up. They're like, they like to know more information about the deportation. Ayana, if you could come in, I'm going to send you the link also if you could speak up about what's going on. I would like you to also um, speak along with me if okay. that's possible. I will send you the link as soon as we get off to your cell phone. No problem. Because, mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
Yes, because they need to know other nationalities of Caribbean descent. This is a Caribbean radio station and they want to know what's going on because they've they've like their heart broken they're like this is devastating this is horrible they need more information about the deportation that's happening to our haitian people thank because you. we're all one absolutely thank you so much queen jenny i will be there and jackson if jackson can be there as well um to Please. share um, as well as maybe Evie, we all three can jump in on that. If yeah, we have time because it's gonna be a Zoom link. So I'm gonna send you guys the exact link. That way, you also could take part in that conversation because they really would like to know what's going on. They feel like this is unbelievable. They can't, and they will like to also send donations. They will like to take part in the march. What whatever. Um, position or whatever's going on, they like to be proactive as well. So this this is, we're getting there. Thank you, sister. I appreciate okay. you. And, um, and speaking and, of, oh, go ahead. I'm here for you and I'm here for us. Thank you. We appreciate you, sister. We appreciate you and we appreciate everybody that has been putting their heads together with us and who come. And speaking of the, the station, the radio stations and the media, anybody that you all know at this time in the media, we wanna thank actually um, some of the great leaders in the media that have been standing with us, such as, but not limited to Mr. Valio St. Louis, Mr. Um, the Community Leaders at, of Voices of America, Mr. Johnson, Napoleon, Mr. Vaval, I'm pretty sure, oh, Peter Pouchon, Queen Jenny, and all those that are representing us in the Haitian and American media, a lot of people have been seeing us, you know, circulating throughout the media. And then I want to also take the time to represent for um, uh, uh, American platform WBLS and Open Line, who interviewed myself and Assemblywoman uh, Mathilde Frontus several weeks ago when this thing first started. Um, Brother Fatim and I, who is the biggest producer there, reached out and was like, what can we do, Anaya? And he called me after that interview and said that was the biggest um, amount of, 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 I guess, views and listeners that they had on any of their platforms for Open Line. That was such a blessing because we came in hard as the people and they really were in tune and they listened and we had over what 10,000 views alone from that one interview with the Assemblywoman Mathilde Frontus. So chapeau pas for that team. Um, Sheila Scott's best friend is Haitian. Um, so Sheila Scott also helped make sure that people watched us that night. And Skip Dillard, who is the, um, the major, I guess the CEO of that platform, um, is in, interested in speaking more to your girl, Anaya A. But I won't go on myself um, to like these platforms like the Breakfast, excuse me, the Breakfast Club or like with Mr. Ebro. I want our team to be represented because sometimes I don't recall every detail. But when you're on a national platform with millions of listeners, online, uh, not just online, sorry, on the airwaves, we have to get it tight. So I'm putting it out yep. there. That I have been in communication with the Breakfast Club, with Charlemagne the God, with, um, you know, Ebro's team. And we may have many more platforms that we're going to be interviewed on very soon. So for the media people out there, understand that we need every media source, not just our Haitian people, but we need Black America, we need Hispanic America, we need White America, um, last but not least, we need to reach out to Wyclef Jean, like I always tell you guys. We need to reach out to yeah. Wendy Goldberg. We need to reach out to The View. Sonny Hostin's husband is Haitian. So we need to reach out to all of those that are affiliated with the media and the press so they can make a bigger platform for us so that they can hear our story and they can be better educated. Lastly, Tamika Mallory. Tamika Mallory, I just dreamt of her last night. It's the craziest thing. If you go on my Facebook page, you'll see who Tamika Mallory is. She is one of the biggest civil rights leaders. I know her. I've met her several times and hung out with her. Um, she has been to the Texas border with Gerlene Joseph um, to fight for us. And I dreamt of this woman last night, weird, but she was helping us with um, the Lamont Moses case as well as Haiti. So I'm like, wow, what does that mean, God? We have to reach back out to Tamika Mallory's team to make sure she's on board. So I just wanted to share those things. So thank you for reminding me, uh, Queen Jenny. Um, at this, thank you. And send me that link, beautiful lady. Um, at this time, thank you. And I'll much. post it. I'll also post it on 
That way everyone could see it. That's Thank you. Smart. Yeah, Perfect. that way. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Thank you, my love. You're welcome. Let's take You're welcome. Mr. Anytime. CB and Mr. John Laguerre. John Laguerre is a, a supporter and a leader. Um, I see a BB on and I see John Laguerre. Whoever can unmute themselves, I see John unmuting. Please go ahead, my dear. So good to see you. Hey, Ania. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Um, I've been very busy, but I've been meaning to come on this platform. I really support what you guys are doing. And I know, Evie, it's, it's, it's true money. But uh, today, I just want to say that I'm standing on shoulders of Ania, of well, Pastor Sam, and Jackson Wackenster. Because I've been around them, I see what they're going through for the love of country. I really admire these guys for the for the uh, sacrifice every day. So I'm here to support. I'm here to learn. I mean, if they call me everywhere because I have to be everywhere. But um, I love you, Ania. I love the platform, and I uh, commend you for what you do. Keep up the good work. God bless you guys. Love you, John, so much. We appreciate you, John. Tell the people more about what you do. Well, I'm 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 a helper of the community. I would say because I'm a financial advisor. And I know legacy is very important for our, for our community. Our community is far behind in, in financial literacy. So I'm a financial builder. I'm a legacy builder. My number is 347-204-5861. So I can help, I can help in whichever way I, I can. I don't give these things. I lead people. I explain to them the program and they can build their own legacy in their world. This is, this is what I do. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much. And at this time, I know we've um, lost a few people, but we got everybody, it seems like. So at this time, we're people are watching on Instagram. I think um, the Pastor Jack um, told me to call him. Pastor Jack, I'll be able to reach out to you once we're done. Instagram, welcome back, Instagram. Um, they've been on with us this whole time. People are shouting us out for all of our efforts. So thank you, Instagram. Thank you, everybody that's watching. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns via Instagram or Facebook, Bendino is watching. Bendino says hi, everybody. Bendino is actually a leader in the community, um, in the fashion industry. We need all hands on deck for tomorrow morning and for December 10th in Washington, D.C. So here we go. Um, we are going to finish up and just share the most important things with you guys. And now that um, I've taken every call, and we're on the Facebook and Instagram. Oh my God, I missed a couple of calls, but I'll get back with them afterwards. You guys basically got all the information. That's what I do. I literally give everybody a platform to share so that I can do um, my behind the scenes work um, and share what I have to at the very end. Let me just recap for everybody. I try to give everybody a chance to speak. If you weren't able to speak, no problem. We will have tomorrow and any other day for you guys to share who you are, or you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. My Facebook is Anaya A period, A-N-I-Y-A uh, space A space period. Um, and then you can follow me on Instagram, the Anaya A show. And then you also have N-V-S-A N-Y-C or F-E-G-M-G-M-T. I know that's a lot of information, but I wanna go ahead and wrap up because we've been on here since 3.30 PM and I wanna just wrap up. So what we just basically shared with all of you, again, thank you for spending time with us. This Wednesday afternoon at 3.30 PM, we started. Um, we were able to get a lot of information out to you all. Again, that's what I do. I give everybody a chance to share so that I can do a little less work at the end. Um, tomorrow morning, first list, um, first item on the list on the agenda is the renaming um, of our community um, where it'll be at Newkirk in front of the church. Um, I have the flyer, I have the information. Assembly B. Shot is the one leading the way with Senator uh, Kevin Parker, and we'll be in Brooklyn, get off on Newkirk, uh, the two or the five train, be there by 10.30 a.m. I know my black and Haitian people, y'all like to show up late and then you're like, oh my God, what happened? Don't do that, we already told you, be there by 10.30. Don't do it, don't come for us, right, Jackson? We're not accepting right. it, <laughs> we're not accepting right. it tomorrow. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> patties and the, and the hot chocolate will, will be served. So the early birds get the worm, as they said, if you come early on time, you will get it. If you don't come early, 
you will not receive any patties and hot cocoa. Sorry. And and you can't blame us for that, but we want you to have some hot cocoa and we want you to have some Haitian patties because Lord knows we love our Haitian patties and our hot chocolate. That's right. Um, so don't blame us if you don't get any of that. So that's at uh, 10 30 a.m. Newkirk. You just get off that two or that five train. Um, if you're coming from Long Island, if you're coming from New Jersey, wherever you're coming from, find the two and the five train and go south to Brooklyn. It's like one of the last stops, okay? I'm not going with directions, but even I can find this place. So that's number one. Number two, we address that we want you all to be present and aware about the trip to Washington, D.C., which is the 10th of December. There's no excuses. We're getting buses sponsored. If you want to be a part of the planning committee, reach out to myself, or better yet, reach out to Jackson Rockenstar because he is the head of Little Haiti BK and he can make sure you get to DC. I may have you in China or Mexico somewhere and you might be mad, but Jackson will make sure you get to Washington DC, amen to that. So with all of the leaders in the community, we wanna to continue to form relationships and form bonds. Um, hi, Sampreneur, I see you, hi, Benzino. Um, We wanna to continue to form bonds. I am a Haitian American and I want you guys to understand, I invite black Americans, African, Americans, like people from Africa too. Like, I don't know how to explain that to make it make sense. But those, all black people, all, all black, black people. people, we're all related. <laughs> Thank Check you. Your DNA. Check your DNA. My DNA, I have family out here in Delaware. Thank My you. grandmother was here before she went to Haiti. Four, four generations, okay? We are all related. Stop this whole thing about, you know, black this and black that. We're black. You're related. We're family. We're Come. family. Thank you, Evie. I was trying to make it make sense, but Evie just shut it down. That's right, sister. We're all Black and we're all related, right, Sabrina? So there's no excuse for us not to work together and um, really make a difference. So with me, if you'll notice, I have a plethora of friends because I don't believe in segregation. I believe in bringing everybody together. That has been my platform for a number of years. This platform will grow and continue to be amazing because I'm the type of person, if I hear something good on one side, I'm gonna bring it to the other side. So we have to work hand in hand. Now, politically, let me just address this real quick. There's a lot going on in Haiti politically. A lot of people have the desire to see somebody be, you know, the president this time the third. We're gonna address some of those concerns on the next platform, but for now, I want you to understand whoever is the best candidate for Haiti, that is what I'm looking to achieve. I know we're in America, but let's be real. What we have going on in America affects what we have going on in Haiti and vice versa. We all have relatives in Haiti that are suffering and we want to address some of the political mess that's happening. Is it dangerous? For us to be involved in Haitian politics, absolutely. But we have much more of a leverage here in the United States and we are able to shed light on what's going on. I wanna say this, and I know this may um, sound peculiar that I'm sharing this, but I don't care what anybody says because at the end of the day, it's about the right thing to do versus just hiding in a corner somewhere. Recently, I saw that somebody who used to be in office and um, in politics in Haiti was coming to perform in New York City. After all the magui and all the mess, I was very upset to see that this major entity and this major um, nightclub, et cetera, was going to allow for such a mess to occur. But guess what, fam? I didn't have to open my big mouth. Somebody did it for me, praise God, and they shut it down. Now, here's the thing, and why do I get involved in speaking about politics? It's because it affects us all again. I'm a bipartisan person. I believe that we all can have a say-so as long as we do it um, respectfully and we have our dignity at the end of the day. I've been dealing with politics for 20 years. I know I don't look like it, but I'm older than what people think. And all I know is white America, you could be fighting one minute on stage and cursing each other out. And the next thing you know, these politicians are sitting behind closed doors, drinking, drinking whiskey and gin and Jim Beam and, and having Chardonnays and talking about how they're going to take care of business together. We as a community must put our feelings aside and we must be able to take care of the business of the people. So that is my platform and the community that shut down this artist from coming in and making a mockery of our people. I applaud you and I will be in contact with those people that stood up against the mess that was about to take place because I feel like there was gonna be a serious riot in Brooklyn. 
but I didn't have to open my mouth, like I said. Last but not least, as you all know, I'm a contributor on the Dr. Oz Show, and recently, like I shared, Dr. Oz's team said, yes, he does have a platform where he helps the young people get into medical school, and he does help with financial resources, et cetera. What we're looking to do, and this has been my plight and my desire for a long time, is see how we can get scholarships to those that are most in need, in particular, those that are underserved in their communities. So we will work with that team and try to see how Dr. Oz can help our young people get to that level and get them resources to become medical doctors. And what I would like to see is when these Haitian students, for example, become medical doctors, they go right back to Haiti and they help out where they can as a part of their internship so that they can build uh, what's been broken for so long in our country. Um, with that being said, we have a 6.30 Zoom with the Economic Crisis Initiative. If you guys don't know, my desire is also to see us make more money in a smart way so we can have investments and properties and a lot of that great things. Um, a lot of those great things that a lot of Black people do not have presently because of gentrification or other issues. But we, with the Economic Crisis Initiative, believe in saving. We believe in getting our funds together. We believe in the cryptocurrency world. Right now, Bitcoin just dropped a little bit under 60000 per. Bitcoin. Had I known about this 10 years ago, your girl would be a multimillionaire. But then again, I would not care about the problems of Haiti because I would be living my best life. So God knows what he's doing. And that's why I'm not a multi-billionaire now. All right, guys, I think we've covered everything. Meet us here at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. John, I would love for you to join us back. Jackson, I would love for you to join us back. Sabrina, you understand that crypto world. I would love for you to join us back. Dre Dre, I would love for you to join us back at 6.30. Teresa Price and anybody that's here that's really concerned about, you know, how do you save money? What's the best way to increase your wealth and decrease your debt? OMG, what's a cryptocurrency? What's a Bitcoin? What's, a, what's, what's all of these things that are happening that you don't have access to? We have a team that's ready to help and make things happen for you. And there's no cost affiliated. Queen Jenny, I think, has been on that platform as well. We want to see all of you successful. It's not just about helping without getting anything in return. We want you to be as successful as possible, and we want everybody to be rich at the end of the day. The richer you are, the more you can write off on your taxes, and the more you can help our people. All right, y'all. Well, if anybody has anything else to share, this is the time. If not, I'll see you at 6.30 p.m. and tomorrow morning um, for some hot chocolate and Haitian patties. Anybody else want to share anything else? At 10.30. Uh, um, Anaya, I'm so sorry, but I have a board meeting with the Y at okay. 6.30. No problem. Uh, so, so I'm so sorry I can't, I can't attend that meeting. I will, but please I will record it and report it to me. Of course. Thank you. That's good night, guys. I also more. have a meeting later on at 6.30 as well with the FDNY, with, I'm sorry, FINY, Faith in New York. They're having a meeting tonight at 6.30 as well. So. No problem. Listen, I share the information and I know not everybody can make every meeting, but why I share is so that for those that can be a part either this week, next week, whenever, because you all are concerned citizens and your leaders in our community. So I wanted to make sure that you have that access to our meetings. Also, with that being said, I will step in Jackson as your mouthpiece and reiterate tomorrow as well as December 10th. And Jackson, let's not forget what we have going on for Friday. Um, please, um, so that we can get that together ASAP. You don't want to wait last mm -hmm. minute. Is that okay yes, with of you? of course. Of course. Perfect. Don't worry about that. That'll be taken, that'll be taken care of tonight. Perfecto. I'm waiting for that. And um, I saw Teresa unmute herself. Teresa, did you have anything else you wanted to do? Have a good night. Hear? Have a good night, Jackson. Teresa, you want to unmute yourself? We can't hear you. Yeah, I wanted to say, if you could give me that information, those names, those emails and stuff like that, because I like to put a donation in. Perfect. Got you, sister. We got you for sure. And we want to work with you more with the ACLU for sure, because we need those uh, people in uh, the legal communities to step in and uh, be a part. So thank you. We will do that for sure. We'll call um, afterwards for sure. Dre Dre, did you have anything to say? I see the exclamation points over your head, Dre Dre. Yeah, I'm just glad to be on tonight. And also on night, I will be there at 630. And I got a lot of great things to talk to you about. Perfect. Thank you, Dre Dre. We appreciate you. All righty. I think we hit every nail on the head. 
Thank you for watching on Instagram. Always reach out to your girl, Anaya A. And just to let you know, I'll be traveling again on Thursday and Friday, and I'm not sure when I'll be back in town. So if you guys don't hear from me sometimes, know I'm on planes and I'm on trains and I'm traveling. And actually, I always pray to God that I would travel and do what I love. I used to travel and party a lot um, as a rock star, but now I'm doing it for humanitarian causes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Chantal, did you have anything else you wanted to share? No? Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Dan, um, I know Dan usually can't speak on these platforms, but Dan has been watching the whole time, and he's a part of the Economic Crisis Initiative as well. So, guys, we did it. We knocked it out. Everybody got their information out there, and we will see you back at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, it's about helping, but it's also about being rich. Ain't nobody can help nobody if they ain't rich, y'all. Let's get rich together. I love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Bye, Sabrina. Bye, everybody. Ciao. All right, Instagram, we did it. Facebook.